Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Intuitive Life Coach. This is your host, Angie, and I am coming at you tonight with a brand new microphone that I have no idea how to use. So I'm really hoping that I'm recording this correctly. So far, it looks like everything's working out, but there could be a little bit of something going on. So if it sounds different, if it's, I don't know, hopefully there's not like background noise and everything this is picking up because normally um, when I record these, I'm able to kind of shield that a little bit. Well, a little, but, um, just want to give you a heads up. I'm excited about it because I am really having a lot of goals for myself to move forward and to continue to grow. I've been really focusing a lot lately on reprogramming my mind and manifesting things into my life. I have been so encouraged and so surprised to see the things that are coming to me. I will say there's times that we feel um, almost like what we ask for maybe will never come. And then um, it's like a period of like quiet before things actually start to happen in our life. And I really think that I went through that period. And I think the important part of that period was because I needed to actually learn to value myself more before I could actually value the things that were coming into my life. Have, had I not done the work to really learn to value myself and learn to know what I offer in the value of what I offer, I don't think that the things that coming my way now would be, um, they wouldn't mean as much. I wouldn't understand them. And I wouldn't, um, I think that I would find my value in them instead of understanding my value is what brings these in. So that is the difference between like manifesting something in our life to make us feel better, which everything is so Things that we desire are really, truly supposed to help us like enhance our life and make us feel better, but we should not find our worth in those things, if that makes sense. So had I received some of the things I'm receiving now prior, I probably would have been finding my actual worth in those things instead of like seeing those as just like um, part of what my energy attracted and manifested because I know my worth. Now that's a continual learning experience. I will always be growing in that area. I will always be learning. And like that is the lifelong journey of the ego is really trying to basically compost it, which I can announce. I think I maybe have announced this before, but I do have my copyright. So you cannot steal my title. Um, I did purchase it already and, but my next book coming out is called Leaf Lessons, Composting the Ego. So I am going back through right now and kind of editing, rewriting, changing some things. Um, but I am about, I think I have seven chapters in it so far and I was editing chapter four today, taking things out, adding things in, and then in January, my editor will be able to take the manuscript and do the final, like, d- dig in there and get all my misspelled words and stuff and, like, change the words around that I put backwards and all that fun stuff. So I I absolutely love my editor. I think that she's one of the people that I've manifested into my life. Like, she just aligns with my message. She aligns with my my view. She, like, spiritually... Um, she just seems like a very, um, intuitive woman. And I just am really thankful that I found her. Um, so I wanted to jump on tonight. It actually is a Friday evening. I've been thinking about doing this podcast for the last several days. And tonight I just, it would not stop leaving my mind. I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna go record it. Um, I want to talk about growth. (laughs) 
which is kind of like what I always talk about, but I want to talk about it in a little bit of a different way tonight. Um, so I had a Facebook, you know, that on the, on Facebook, those memories pop up from like years prior and well, I had a Facebook memory pop up and these happen, this has happened quite a bit in the lot recent years since my dad passed. Um, this one popped up a couple days ago and I clearly remember the moment that I, I had a picture on this post and the post, the picture I had taken chalk, um, out my back porch as I was sitting outside and I wrote, there's always hope. And I remember writing that. I remember crying when I wrote it. I remember not really believing that, but something in me was like, just keep hope. Like this can't be the end. Like I feel like emotional now talking about it. But what is interesting is at that time that I wrote that, it was, um, so it would have been like October 26th or something like that of 2020. Just a month prior to that, like literally just a month prior to that, I had been fired from my job. A job that I had been recruited for, mind you. They had begged me to come and work for them. I lost my dad five days later after I was fired from my job. Um, So I stood beside my dad and watched him take his last breath and leave the world. And then a week later, I was doing foster care at the time. Um, I, you know, I don't blame my foster daughter at all. I was a mess. So, but she became dysregulated and angry and destroyed my home and threw every single item I ever bought her at me and told me she hated me and she wanted to leave. At that point, I had nothing left. (laughs) So I had three losses in a row within a like two week period. I was devastated. I didn't know what was going on. Now, mind you, this is 2020. We had just, COVID had just hit. I remember being at work one day in 2019 and a coworker said something to me about, have you seen all this stuff about COVID that's going over? Like at the, at that time, I think it was in, still in China. Like that was the only place it was in. And I, at the time I'm like, we have this stuff all, all the time on the media. Like this is not going to make it here. Like we're all, you know, all these like bird stuff and like all these things, like there's no way that it's going to come to America, you know? And just within, like, I think that it was maybe a month to two months later, all of a sudden we had cases popping up. And I was like, holy crap, this is real. (laughs) And then the world started shutting down. And then everybody started to have to wear a mask. And then um, all the kids got pulled from school. And all the stores got shut down. And life as we knew it just stopped. And so... In the middle of that, all that going on, my foster daughter at the time had attempted suicide and I, she had texted me, I was at work, she had texted me and said, uh, I can't remember exactly what she said, but it, it was something about not, not wanting to live. I don't know exactly what it was, but I am trained in, um, trauma, um, And so when she said this, I kind of already knew that it was real. Like, this is the real deal and I need to pay attention to this. And so I rushed home from work and I found her lying in her bed and she had taken um, a whole bottle of, I don't remember, one of her prescription meds. And I wasn't really sure where she got it or how she got it. But um, I, had, I, I called my worker and we rushed her to the hospital. And because my work was so demanding, I had to go back to work. And so I left her with my the worker. And he, he let me know later about how um, 
they treated them when they were in a waiting room and it was not nice. So my, my foster daughter was African American. She was black. She was beautiful. I adored her. I was going to adopt her. Um, she was, uh, seven. I got her when she was 16 and she turned 18 when she left. Um, and before I knew it that night, she had, um, flatlined and was put in the ICU and being a mom, I had to go and be with her. And I had a really hard time with that because my job did not understand. Um, mind you in the middle of all this, I'm working in a psychiatric facility for teenage girls. I am helping take care of my dad who has cancer and I'm dealing with my own healing, like a very, very deep, hard healing. And I, that, you know, that that wasn't the only thing that happened. There was a ton of things happened. And shortly later I had at the time, um, I had had two foster daughters, two teenage girls at my house when um, COVID hit. And so it was really, really hard time for me. It was overwhelming. I was exhausted. It was, um, pretty devastating, everything that was happening. And when I got pulled in the office and got fired at my job, I remember sitting there and I put my hands on my head and I said out loud, what is happening to my life? (laughs) And you know, I knew my dad was about to pass. I just had this feeling. And then a week later or five days later, and I mean, a week later, he, he did leave the earth. And then that thing happened with my foster daughter where she left my home. And just a month later on my back porch with chalk, (laughs) I wrote, there's always hope. This pops up on my memory in Facebook a few days ago, and a overwhelming feeling came over me of how far I've come since that moment, since those moments, since all of those moments. Mind you, I'm not sharing a lot of details. I lost friends during this time. Um, I did not find a job for three months. I, it, I mean, I could barely make it through an interview without crying. I applied for at least 10 jobs a day. And if you applied for jobs recently, it takes hours just to fill out an application now. I was so, I was at the darkest time in my entire life. I fully admit that. So having hope was the last thing that I probably really even believed I could have. But I held on to it. I held on to hope. And that hope carried me through. And just two very short years later, I have written my first book and published it. I am writing my second book. I was certified in meditation and mindfulness. I got my, I became a Reiki master. I got my sound healing. I took a course on facilitating groups. I changed my entire life. I am a certified spiritual life coach now, and I give hope to other people. I wanted to share all this with you guys because There's so many things in this world that can take our hope. There's so many things that can steal it from us. But as I wrote on the, on my porch with the chalk, there is always hope. You just have to pull it up out of your spirit and start to manifest it into real life. And if you do that, you will make it through anything. So this is a short and sweet little message to you all to remind you to keep going. And if you would like one-on-one coaching with me, please reach out. I would love to help give you some hope. I'm going to wish you all the best night, day, evening, whatever time it is. Send you all the universal love that there is. Namaste.